Yeah, and then we were at the Oscars the, the other week. Oh, we are just at the Oscars. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about that, please, <laughs> that if is, you don't mind. <laughs> that was just like, well, it's, it's a lot of things. It's just, first, it's just amazing being in that, that room. You know, you're just... Is it like it's a wonderful celebration, but you're also just looking at all these people that you've grown up with and kind of like, oh my God, that's them there. That's, you know, Scarlett Johansson, that's Brad Pitt, that's, you know, that's Tom Hanks. It's you seeing all these people and then, and then we had, you know, it's, it's a lovely celebration of all the year's films and then there's like the parties afterwards and everything. So it was, yeah, it was grand. Is, I, it, yeah. is the bubble over now? Is it, are you done? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I got, I got back the other day and like there's a leak under my sink. So like, but don't you know. they, aren't there like the Hofmeister Bear Awards in Germany and all that? What do they call the Golden Bear Awards? They, oh, the, the, um, uh, what, Berlin, Berlinale, you know, the film I, festival. I don't know what they are. But yeah. uh, I mean, there must be loads of places where 1917 is, is still yet to be sort of honoured. I don't. I don't know. I think it's. This is kind of. This is it for the now. I think that that one in in, in Berlin is more uh, is a film festival. I think you know the film's not in the film festival. Right. That's more. Especially, I think it's a lot of independent films will go there to find distribution. So I think strangely, that was the other thing as well. Is it's been because the filming process came just before the promotional process. It's all of last year was 1917. Right. Was the rehearsals, the filming, and the. Which is quite rare there. in the film world, isn't it? It's, yeah, so rare. Sometimes you're, you know, like Ned that we're talking about was a year and a half ago. Well, they were not talking about, but we will. But like, you know, but, but like that, but that thing of, you know, the, the, what we're sort of, yeah, like kind of hit, made, may discuss this morning. But, alluding to. Yeah, alluding to. But like that's the thing with 1917. It was, I guess it may be like doing a play or something. It was just. Everything, what everything last year was 1917, wow. and kind of last Sunday, we also had the kind of understanding that the the Oscars, wonderfully, we didn't expect that we'd go there, but as as it turned out, that's the last thing that we'll do with it probably for 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 now, you know. And have you seen this darn film Parasites that that picked you to the post oh, in the end? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. not seen it. People are ra- no people are raving about it's it. It's really good. It's really it's really, really good. sort of different, isn't it? It's that's the beauty of it. It's so it's so hard to encapsulate because it's so many things at once. But it's not not in a vague sense. It's just so complex and brilliant, but also really clear. I, I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, it it's does. Just, it's like masterfully done. And South Korea, it's South Korean film, isn't it? Yeah. And one of the reasons South Korea has sort of punched way above the weight in the entertainment business is because they have a ministry for entertainment. It's part of the government. Wow. Yeah, and they'd make a big deal of it because they they know that entertainment really sort of, you know, exports. You know, entertainment is a global thing and it will be around forever. As technology comes and goes, entertainment will just be delivered in a different way, but entertainment will be the constant, not the technology with which it comes through. So South Korea, way ahead of the game philosophically, have this whole government department geared towards producing the best music, film, you know, and art in the world. And they are, it's beginning to happen for them. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. That's I didn't know that. That's, fan- that one, that's fantastic. So Makes get sense. yourself to South Korea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK. Get landed. Right, we're going to talk about George's brand new film. When we come back, we'll have the travel first, and then we are going to get stuck right into the subject at hand. OK, so here we go. True History of the Kelly Gang, released next Friday, uh, starring George and many other people, including a Russell Crowe. A horrible Russell Crowe, George. Yeah. He's horrible in this film, isn't he? He's kind, of, he's kind of horrible, but then he's also lovable. He's a sort of... It's like the film. He's, he's more a horrible lot of, than a lovable, lot of things at once. Yeah, yeah, I guess he does. Yeah, the, the scene... Yeah, I agree. He's really good at being horrible in this. Uh, and there's some horrible moments. I mean, it doesn't pull any punches, does it, as a movie? No, it's pretty It's pretty brutal. It's pretty brutal. Brutal right? is the word. I yeah, I think that that's kind of... Justin's filmmaking is often like, that and also the yeah the world the world is brutal the world of the story is brutal yeah it's it's brutal okay so <laughs> I, I did i wasn't sure because i'm stupid i wasn't sure whether ned kelly was a, a fictional character or not but he, of course he he definitely existed yeah he definitely existed but i guess that's what the film's about in terms of like he existed but now it's at least in australia his name and his image kind of of the this bulletproof helmet homemade helmet has been appropriated to kind of mean anything by lots of other people but no one actually knows who he really like, I mean, I'm sure like, there's lots of history like historical kind of yeah, lots of text legend, on it though, lots of myth but, but so, sort of like he's become almost part of fiction he's a symbol that people appropriate rather than the man himself and this is a film about a kind of version of that man trying to put down his own history but the first 20 minutes of Ned as a boy played by a brilliant young actor who's, yeah, who's that Orlando Orlando's amazing Orlando okay. Schwartz okay so, so and that, and that sets up um, his backstory and the trauma that and the rage deep within, which turns him into the kind of fearless anti-hero that he becomes, I suppose. Yeah. Um, what? How? How? What's? What's? What's the best way of describing the tra- that transition from from a, a, a child or a, a young teenager to to a young adult? I think. Well, 
I mean, the tra- the transition, you kind of, yeah, you jump from boy to man. And I think for me as playing the adult version, what I found fascinating about him is that I think because as a boy he was made to be a man, it stunted him as a man. Yeah. And as a man... Oh, that's interesting. He's trying to, you know, he's he's kind of, he's become his mother's husband while his is you know, because of his dad's failures is in, in a way. And there's some cr- cross-dressing. There's, there's a, some cross-dressing as well. And it kind of that thing as a, as a man, he's trying to sort of suss out where he's going and kind of using, looking back and sort of the, wrestling with the stuff that he wants to run away from and the things that he wants to use from his past, one of which being this idea of the Sons of Sea, which is the Banshees, which is this curse of, you know, the, like the, the angel of death coming from Ireland. And they sort of appropriate that to be their armour, which is, yeah, involves a lot of cross-dressing. He's and the thing that really crushes dresses. him as a human being at such a tender age is the fact that his mum, who he absolutely idolises because mm. his dad is gen- basically rubbish, mm. um, then goes and sells him. Yeah. to this vagabond yeah. and he thinks that this guy is a gentleman who's come to sort of save him and, and say you know life can be like this but he doesn't realise he's secretly been sold by his mum to become Russell Crowe's character's uh, um, very reluctant murderous 11 year old assistant or 12 year old assistant yeah he's a, he's a confused young man just a bit he's just kind of, he's pulled from pillar to post and yeah, his understanding of the world keeps chopping and changing in the most extreme ways. And I think, yeah, the man that you meet, like when I when I play him as, as an adult, he's just caught in the maelstrom of all of that confusion, having been kind of believed one thing and then having that ripped away from him and then going, but kind of being drawn back to the thing that threw him that direction. It's just, yeah. and so then as an adult, he's trying to kind of suss that out for himself and take ownership over all of that stuff. Which I don't know, and you well, you see how that kind of where that commitment takes. Well, you him. can only have your heart broken so many times before it it, it uh, um, doesn't exist any longer, and then he mm. t- he puts himself back together, but as a heartless character, uh, but with this this irrepressible, almost superhuman drive. Mm. And the first time we see you is under a, a Union flag, mm. and I'm thinking, hang on, I've got the wrong movie here. It looks like uh, I don't know, it looks like Quadrophenia two or something, <laughs> and then and you look a bit like Bradley Wiggins in it, of course, being Bradley Wiggins <laughs> and Paul Weller, and it's all a bit punky. And and that's all on purpose, isn't it? Yeah, completely. Like, just the thing is, Ned Kelly in Australia, like, is such a revered figure that people are terrified of touching that history. And so stories about him are sometimes kind of a bit bound up by that. Yep. And Justin said, we're going to let go of the history and we're going to make it in the spirit of these boys rather than, you know, by the letter of what has been said. Especially if what we're trying to say is who knows if what was said was right. So, yeah, he wanted it. He said, I see the Kelly gang as a punk band. And for that, in rehearsals, he got us to form a punk band. <laughs> Like, I heard about this. Yeah, we had like we turned up four weeks before shooting, and he was like, "Right, so I see him as a punk band. Uh, so I booked you boys a gig in Melbourne, and uh, you're going to form a band, write some songs, and play a gig." And uh, and we did. And he's like, "I want you listening what to each." What a great way to pay for a role. Yeah, it was mad. It was mad. And it, you know, got us listening to each other like differently and opening up because you're sharing songs. You've yeah, got, of course. Like, first day, you're like, "Well, I've written this poem as the character. How's how's that?" And then you you know, but then. You do the gig and we did it in dresses in a bar and like just under a different name and everything. So it was it was a kind in of anonymous dresses in a bar, you know, an anonymous gig. But then the next day you walk on with this swagger of being like, we did that, whatever. Like yeah. We can, you know, we can do anything, which well, is this also, attitude of the guys. And what the director got you, what he, what he achieved was, which is what he wanted to achieve. Is he got you thinking as one. Yeah, 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 you're yeah. you're a unit, weren't you? Then yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's that's the really clever move. The Chris Evans Breakfast Show with Sky.